In this video, we solve problems 7.2.37 or 37 from Essentials of Statistics 6th edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says that salaries of 49 college graduates who took a statistics course in college have a mean X bar of $64,200. Assuming a standard deviation sigma of $11,434, construct a 95% confidence interval for estimating the population mean mu. Now notice that this time in this example, we're actually given the population standard deviation. That's very uncommon, but in this example, um, that's accurate. We're told that the population standard deviation is this amount. In this case, this is the way we construct the confidence interval. Our true population mean mu is still in between x bar minus the error and x bar plus the error, where x bar is that sample mean. But this error is computed using a different formula now. If we have the population standard deviation, the error turns out to be given by this z sub alpha over 2 times the population standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. Notice that this looks very similar to the formula that we had for the error before, but in the other case, when we didn't have the population standard deviation, we had the sample standard deviation right here, and we had to use the student t distribution for a critical z value, critical z value, excuse me, a critical value of z. Um, or of, of t in that case. Um, so here we're using our standard normal distribution to find the critical value and the population um, standard deviation. In the other case, when we don't have the population standard deviation, we use the sample standard deviation here and the critical t value as opposed to the z value. This time, whenever this is the case, we don't need degrees of freedom because we're just gonna use a standard normal distribution. Okay, so in order to use this, we need um, to know x bar, and they actually gave that to us. So let's write down everything that was given. We're given that x bar, that's that mean salary for our sample, is $64,200. We are given that the population standard deviation is $11,434. We're asked to construct a 95% confidence interval. And that means that alpha is the complement of that. So if the confidence interval is a 95% confidence interval, alpha is um, the complement, which would be 5%, but we want to write that in decimal form, that's 0.05. And then to get the critical value here, we actually need alpha over two. So we're gonna take half of that, half of 5% is two and a half percent, which can be written in decimal form this way. Now remember how this, this works. We're looking at a standard normal distribution now that's giving us the distribution of these Z scores. When we want a 95% confidence interval, we want 95% of our area in the middle. And then the other 5% is split in between two tails. So we'll have 2.5% over here and 2.5% over here. And this is the z-score that corresponds to that 2.5% um, in that far right tail. And then the remaining 97.5% is the area to the left. Now 95% is the most common um, critical value um, so we can look at our table A2 and immediately just go to that bottom right hand corner to find this Z score. You may have already memorized it because we use it so often. Let me show you how to find it on table A2. So I'll go over here, go down to my positive Z scores. And then because it's so common, it's one of those most popular z-scores that we have, or more, most popular confidence levels that we have. It is the most popular confidence level of 
the Z score that goes with that or the critical value that goes with that is 1.96 according to this. So I'm just talking about that right there. Okay. So I've got my X bar. I've got my sample or my population standard deviation. Um, I know that my sample size is 49 because we're looking at 49 salaries. And I think that's everything we need. We need X bar and then we need to compute the error. For the error, we need the critical value of Z, which we just found. That was implied by that 95% confidence interval. We need this, which was given to us, and we need the square root of the sample size, which happens to be 49. Okay, so we have everything that we need. So we were given all of this, and then we used this piece to compute this piece, and we we're given this. So now let's compute the error. The margin of error. So that's our critical value of Z times the standard deviation, which happens to be known as population standard deviation. And we're dividing by the square root of the sample size. And I will use a calculator for my arithmetic. Square root of 49 is seven. And we get an a margin of error of approximately uh, 3,201.52. And we know what X, <coughs> excuse me, we know what X bar is. So we want to now compute the upper and lower limits for our confidence interval. We've got X bar plus the error, that's 64,200 plus 300 or 3,201 and 52 cents. So we're gonna have um, 67,401 and 52 cents for our upper limit. And then for our lower limit, we're gonna take that 64,200 and subtract that $3,201.52. And I'll use a calculator for that one. So that gives me a lower limit of $60,998.48. Okay, now that we've got our upper limit and our lower limit, then we go to the original question and we're told to um, find that uh, confidence interval estimate of the true population mean. The true population mean is between this $60,998.48, we're asked to round to the nearest integer. So $60,998 to um, this value. Um, $67,401.52, and we'll round up, so $67,402 in that case. Okay, so let's read the problem statement. It says, it says assuming a standard deviation of $11,434, construct a 95% confidence interval for estimating the population mean mu, and this is the mean salary of college graduates who've taken a statistics class. So the mean salary, or we are 95% confident that the true mean salary of, com of college graduates that have taken a statistics class is between $60,998 and uh, 67402 dollars So the true mean is in there somewhere, 95% uh, percent of the time, um, if we do this over and over again. Okay. So let's enter that in my lab statistics. So 
So our uh, lower limit was 60,998. Our upper limit was 67,402. Okay, great. Oh, and that was it. That was the whole question.